Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista. And I'm still pointing at myself. <laughs> you are. And we're back. We're, we are back. Uh, you might hear it in my voice. I'm still a little sick. Yeah. A little so we, sick. <laughs> we recorded like a lot of episodes in advance, and then we got sick and we missed one. Yeah, we so missed... So it's, it's been a while. It's been a while it's since a while. we recorded. Like but live. we didn't... We didn't do one last week at all. We had no voices, I, especially you. I was I was right out of town. Um, here's the thing about getting in a little metal tin can and flying through the air with a bunch of other humans. Um, their germs kind of spread. Yeah. The, the recirculating air. Yeah. Uh, it, it gets to you. And I caught something on the way home, I think. I don't yeah. know. I, we both got sick. You got way worse. Well, I got sick, and then I made you sick. And then you made me sick. I, I, will, I got sick first, for sure. Good job. So it's, it's my fault. <laughs> I apologize. So anyway, we are sorry for not being here last week, but we had no We missed crisis. all of you. Yes. Every single one of you. But especially... The people in whatever better know a listener that you're. Well, gonna first get of to. all, first of all, we especially missed all the people from Duncan, especially Chris, especially Chris, <laughs> because thank you for reaching out to us and uh, our first better know a listener <laughs> that better knew us and yeah and, and reached out and and I I'm sorry that I didn't know about the the world's largest hockey stick. That seems like a serious mistake. That is part. a big mistake on my part. Um, mm. That's very cool. Hockey stick and puck. I, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go visit that. that I'm one day. I'm Literally? gonna go visit that. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go see it one day in my life. I'm gonna go see the world's largest hockey stick and puck. Yeah, that sounds very cool. Yeah. Also, so, so we do this thing now. Better know a listener, and like we said, our last one was Duncan, and Chris from Duncan reached out. Chris has done some cool Disney stuff. In I have his a, I have a little I have a little bit of jealousy. Yeah. To Chris and Mostly his family, but yeah, okay. For That's the fine. Walt's Main Street Story Tour. <laughs> they they got to see Walt's apartment above the yeah. fire. I'm I'm very jealous. I can tell I'm getting you very got high octave <laughs> went up an octave or two a little, there. A couple so, octaves, yeah. So yes, uh, especially to our better know listener, but especially. To Chris and his family. Cheers, and cheers to Chris. Let's, hold on, hold on, hold let's on, clink, hold on. Let's clink, clink, clink. clink. Okay. There we go. So let's say let's segui. Um, <laughs> segui. We cl- we clinked. What, we what are you drinking? Nice segui. Mm. Uh, we were at our local brewery this evening, this afternoon, evening, yeah, and uh, we are drinking f- uh, beer from there, from past beer, which is this is trees don't move. Is that correct? Trees don't move. All right, we got to growl our home. Which is a reference to uh, both skiing and mountain biking. Um, if you're going through the trees. The, the, the trees don't move. Yeah, you got to move because they don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to run into a tree because they don't move. <laughs> yeah, so this is an IPA, and you're drinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, because we got a growler. We got a growler. Yeah. What is your nerd thing this week? Um, I don't, I don't do anything nerdy. What are you talking about? I'm. Why? Why are you pointing? Okay, okay. We just, we I'm just. I'm pointing up to where our upstairs yes, no, TV okay, is. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Yes. So, um, we finally. Finally finished the uh, Last of Us season one uh, a couple days ago. Yes. Uh, shot in our beautiful home province of Al- yep. Alberta. Yep. Um, we've seen a lot of scenes in that show that were uh, <laughs> we've life. seen them in real life. So like, it, not it, only seen them, but like on a very regular basis. <laughs> it, it's a, it's an unusual circumstance yeah. for us because we're not from like Southern California where this mm-hmm. stuff happens all the time. Anyway, so we watched that show. And I'm a gamer, and that that's a, a show based on a video game, which is also kind of unusual. Like, video game based media has not been historically very successful, except recently. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, and then all of a sudden, that's now the thing to do. Apparently, I guess so. Anyway, uh, Last of Us was very good. Uh, we enjoyed it not only because it was shot in our local area, but. It was a good show. Yeah, it was I, a good I enjoyed show. it. Pedro and not Pascal. Just because of Pedro Pascal. Pedro although, Pascal is. Hold on, we got a chef's kiss here. Mwah. He is. He is a zaddy with a capital Z. Heck yeah. <laughs> Z because it's Canadian. Um. <laughs> anyway, so that inspired me. <laughs> I I restarted playing the Last of Us video game because I had played it before, but I didn't get very far because I I didn't really love the combat in it. Mm-hmm. Um. But I, re- I started, and it, it's actually pretty good. Are you feeling better about the combat in it? I am. I With an asterisk? I, it's a paradigm shift, because I was used... When I started playing it, I realized why I didn't like it the first mm-hmm. time. Because I, had, I was just fresh off of playing Uncharted, which is another third-person action game. Okay. 
but it ha- th- that's an action game with a capital A, whereas <laughs> Last of Us is more of a survival game with light action sequences. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't quite get that. Your the mind first time. chip didn't work. You, you, in Last of Us, you kind of have to avoid combat more than actually engaging in it because you're surviving. You don't Whereas have, in you don't have was that. Do all the combat. Yeah, kill you, all just, you kill all the people. No, you want to more avoid people mm. or monsters or whatever. I was say people is a strong term on a lot the, of the these people guys. are more scary than the monsters uh, in Last of Us. To be honest with in you, in the show too. Yeah, hmm. but yeah, that's what I've been doing. Cool, I like that. I okay, so. You got me on Steam a cozy game pack. I know you're a cozy gamer, so I yes. got you a cozy game pack. I, I like never think of myself as being a gamer, but you were explaining to some of your gaming buddies today about the amount of hours I've put into Animal Crossing. I have gaming buddies because I'm that much Because, yes, you are. Okay. And uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley and stuff like that. And so I guess I would say that I'm a cozy gamer. Hardcore cozy gamer. <laughs> See, I never think of myself that way. But no, it, yeah. it, it just is. It's a just, problem. It's just facts. Yeah, straight facts. So okay. you got me a cozy game bundle, and I was like, I'm going to like <laughs> try one, and then I played the entire game. And not that I got obsessed. But a, little, a little bit upset. They can't yeah. see you do no, like, you the little finger. Yeah. Okay, little fingers, uh, just just a little bit obsessed. Yeah, um, you, you haven't got all the achievements yet. Though. No, I'm at 15 out of 17, so I'm gonna keep playing until I get them all, and then I'm gonna start a new one, and then do everything in that one, and then I'm gonna be very thorough in going through. So you, you're into cozy <laughs> games, but then you're like hardcore on the cozy games. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is called Lemon Cake. Mm-hmm. It was super fun, and I got like. Okay, what's the What's the premise of l- lemon cake? <laughs> okay, so you show up at an abandoned bakery. As one does. As one does, yeah. but it mm. isn't actually abandoned. There's a ghost that lives there. Okay, uh, and I would leave immediately. <laughs> no, it's a ghost that is very Friendly nice. ghost. A like friendly Cas- ghost. Casper. Yeah, Casper, yeah, okay. um, who was a baker her whole life, and it was her bakery, and she's super sad. Does the ghost control you with your hair like a ratatouille situation? Not quite. Or raccoon. Raccoon. Not, yeah. not no, a raccoon no. either. Okay. But does help you learn recipes and things like that. And so you kind of like refix up the bakery and there's like a greenhouse attached and you can like live upstairs and there's like a kitchen and the bakery itself. And then you basically, you reopen the bakery bit by bit as you learn recipes and make money. And then eventually you give the ghost confidence enough to become your waitress. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a fate worse than death. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay, so from the outside <laughs> looking in, mm-hmm. I would just, des- like, correct me if I'm wrong, I would describe this as like a Harvest Moon light crossed with Overcooked. I mean, like... If you know what games are. Kind of. Like, the Overcooked in terms of, like, the making the recipes and the having specific things and, and things like that against the clock. Yeah. Um, Harvest Moon, like, style. I guess. Right, because you gotta you, you gotta water your stuff and yeah, and, but it's and, all very much based on like you have your baking day and you're just like a, yeah. yeah 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 okay yeah I think I think I pegged it I think I pegged it it's fun anyway okay I really liked it I played it like hardcore for a few days and now I just need to have like two I've passed everything except there's two achievements I haven't gotten yet so I have to I'm like going back and getting this now you're you're a gamer now when you start going back to play a game that you've already beat to get achievements you're you're well, a gamer I'm at 15 out of 17 you, you can't leave it with just two i'm not saying I've, I've been there trust me i've been there well we were playing and we were both sick and so you were like bringing me tea and co- well coffee and then tea as i was playing and then i looked up and like four hours had gone by why would happen yeah and you were like well i've been there and i'm like I, oh yeah i don't know if i've ever experienced that so it's um, a thing. It's I'm a thing. not Trust saying me. I'm a gamer. However, I enjoy cozy games on occasion. Okay. We won't discuss the amount of hours I put into Animal Crossing. <laughs> no, we will not, because that's a problem. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's my nerd thing right now. Um, do you have anything else to add before we go to the news? Well, no. Are we going to go better know a listener first? We, n- we need to go to All better right. low- know a listener. All right. Um... Oh yeah, yeah. We need to go to better know a listener. All right, I'm ready. We're going, we're going pretty cool because this this town. I I saw the name of this town, the city, this place, and I had to talk about it because it sounds cool. Because it's <laughs> it's a, it's a cool name, um, Egg Harbor City. That that is that is an interesting name, Egg 
harbor like egg is in like the food yeah like the chicken e g g okay as in as in chicken lays an egg egg harbor city um, wait is this near new york um kind of because it's in it is in new jersey okay because in great gatsby just off of new york they have west egg and east egg okay maybe it's like related Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's like... Egg Harbor. <laughs> okay. And Egg Harbor, apparently, is known for three things. All right, I'm ready. The Silver Fox Farm alpacas. Oh, you love... Liz, are, aren't all alpacas like your favorite animal? It, they are one of my favorite animals. Okay. Alpacas are adorable. They're like llamas, but ador- like Even friendly. Like, yeah. Friendly. Like, they did spit well, at you much less. L- llamas are kind of mean. Alpacas our friend friend shape they're friend shapes <laughs> Alpa- they're friend shaped llamas La- llamas llamas kind of spit and they have the weird teeth alpacas are friend shape <laughs> so alpacas are awesome and then they also have the angels in the pines goat farm <laughs> which and is your other favorite animal. that is my favorite animal is is a goat like i don't know i'm you should probably post the my selfie with the goat oh so brandon made best friends with a baby goat last fall actually we're are we gonna go to the pumpkin patch again this year? i would love to go to the pumpkin. okay well we do that. i want i want to go see totes i want to go see totes totes my goats uh uh grandchild or whatever <laughs> um and take another selfie yeah but he, he took a selfie with a goat it, it is my greatest selfie of all time because it's with a goat and the goat posed for the selfie so and brandon named him totes because he's totes. totes my goat totes my goat because um, <laughs> he was my goat and he was my buddy and we hung out for like quite a long time <laughs> he was my buddy um i love goats especially baby goats and so that's that's two of the things they named right. th- they're known for Pr- two pretty great things the third thing they're known for third number three is the renault winery resort Ooh, i like wine winery resort Ooh, i like resorts too yeah so that sounds pretty cool i i don't know what's involved in the resort but it's a winery so it's probably egg wine harbor city yeah in new jersey okay if you are from egg harbor city first of all hello second of all have you seen these alpacas goats or explain what is in a wine resort please because i am intrigued <laughs> Well, and apparently Great Egg Harbor got its name from explorer Cornelius Jacobson May, which doesn't even make any sense, but that's what it says. He was Dutch. Okay, also tell me if this has anything to do with the Great Gatsby, because in Great Gatsby, it's this whole thing about West Egg and East Egg and how the, like, parts of the land that jut out into the ocean are shaped like eggs. So... Please explain if this is related at all, because I want to know. Uh, I mean, it's prob it's probably <laughs> anyway. Egg Harbor City. That's cool. Egg Harbor City with alpacas and goats and wine resorts. They they have cool animals and also wine that for some reason. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like the best part of New Jersey from <laughs> everything I've heard about New Jersey. Which is mostly Jersey Shore. Mostly Jersey Shore <laughs> and also New Jersey Devils, which eh. yeah. Um, I'm sorry, the New Jersey Devils just, like, ruined 90s hockey. <laughs> uh, you got very Canadian there for a I minute. did. I did. Yeah, eh? <laughs> the, the trap that the New Jersey Devils instituted in the 90s ruined hockey. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Egg Harbor City, much better than the trap uh, instituted by the New Jersey Devils. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go news. Disney A News Update. Okay, so we haven't had the news for a while because we did, like, what was it, three episodes in advance? And so we didn't have we, news for any of those We did things. have a lot in the can, and we didn't have any news because we didn't know what's going on. So we, we got we to gotta catch up. What's, okay. What's big? What's Ooh, big? What's happening? Here we go. Are we ready? Are we ready? Oh, I'm ready. Tons of merch. Lots of merch. Related to Haunted Mansion, which I'll cut back to in a minute. Haunted Mansion, the movie, because, uh-huh, yeah, that all makes that, sense. Totally. I'm a big fan of the Madame Leota stuff in particular. Look at that cool lounge fly bag. The lounge fly Yay. bag is fantastic. But they have a whole, they have a couple different lines related to that. Also. Appa- apparently, the jacket, terrible. Was it, that Haunted Mansion jacket? Yes, it or was, was Haunted it Mansion like, jacket. Right ter- no, it was oh, Haunted okay. Mansion jacket, terrible. Um, and the uh, baseball cap that we saw on a video. Ugh. 
gross. Literally the worst merch I've ever seen. The worst merch I've ever seen. And normally I'm just like, eh, this isn't for me, but this is like flat out ugly. No, no, just cheap and poorly made and garbage. However. Because most Disney merch I want, but I just can't afford. Yeah. This one, I <laughs> it's just embarrassing. Yeah. Like, come on. Okay. Anyway. Okay, a bunch of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, um, including plushies, we also have, speaking upon a mansion, um, more food and things like that. There's, um, like, you treats. You got your April to December, candle. your April to December, uh... Churros. Churros. We heard good things churros. about that. Churros! Um, can you, do you want to explain the April to December? We're like, why is this a haunted mansion thing? Do you want to know, it's, do you remember why? Uh, well, it's, when you're going after the stretching room, when you're walking through, there's all the portraits mm -hmm. and stuff. There's the one of the lady that, like, goes from young and beautiful to yeah, old and like horrible. Yeah, like a calendar. It's April to December. Yeah, it's great, right? It's, it's a good reference, I don't know. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of different Haunted Mansion food offerings to celebrate the movie. There's some merch. There's things like that. Oh, and there's a prefix menu at uh, the one restaurant that's uh, Haunted Ooh, Mansion themed. where was themes. that at? I think it's at uh, the New Orleans restaurant that's not closed right now. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Not not the French not the French market because that's closed. It's mm -hmm, going to become mm -hmm. Tiana's Palace, which is also in my news. Uh, yes, um, it's the it's the other yeah Cafe Orleans. Cafe I, Orleans. I believe I believe so. Okay, it's a prefix menu. And it's anyway. like there's um you have a couple different options, but there's like a seafood broil and it's a whole thing anyway. But it's all haunted mansion themed. Exactly. And it's only it's only like fifty bucks or something. And like. Pretty, Sounds pretty good. Pretty good for a three course meal at Disney anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got merch related to that. We have um, lots of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff has come out, and that was just the precursor because as of August 1st this L year. Literally August 1st. It, it, they, 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 had a, they had the ears and something else um, in, mm -hmm. in July even, but like there was a yeah. full line August 1st in <clears throat> Halloween. the stores. All Halloween stuff. Tons of Halloween merch is out Ridiculous. now. Ridiculous. So anyway, if you were at all... One of those people who are excited for Halloween merch. I I have said this to many people now, because the Halloween merch is, is around here too. Not as cool as, as Disneyland, of course. But everyone who complains about Christmas Christmas merch showing up in November in November. Mm -hmm. I'm finishing your sandwiches right now. Sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs> that was a, that deserved a high five. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was a Disney reference. Yeah, and, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't hear anyone complaining about Halloween merch in August. Okay, A, that's because Halloween is awesome. And so B, is Christmas. And, and B, there's no Halloween carols. <laughs> that's what that's what drives people nuts about Christmas no. is, is the repeated music. You got, well, I'm going to start listening to Halloween You got your Christmas music. carols. You got your Christmas carols. You got your Mariah Carey. You don't want to hear that on repeat for two months straight. I do. Mm -hmm. Um... You notwithstanding, but like you don't you don't hear Halloween music. You hear that no, like a week before Halloween. No, people complain about Christmas merch be showing up November first, and they always say that's too early. That's too early. That's too early. It's, it's and it's now, the, but they say it's the merch, and so I better hear you complaining about August first no, because that's even longer. It's the music and probably the Hallmark movies as well. Oh, I love the Hallmark movies. Oh my it, god. But people like scary stuff, so we can have that for a long time. Yeah, but people com actually actually do complain about the merch. And that's that's silly because Christmas, you buy gifts for people. Halloween, you're not typically buying gifts for people. You can buy people. gifts for people all year you long. You can, however. So I better hear some people complaining about this. Personally, I don't care. Just like I don't care about there being Christmas merch in on November 1st or even into October for that matter. But for me, Christmas begins November 12th. Um, but yeah, that is when we start Christmas. In yeah, our house. no, that, yeah. that that's when Christmas begins. Yeah. Uh, Halloween can Halloween can begin August first. Uh, that's fine with me. <laughs> I, I love Halloween. Spooky season. Let's go. We do go. like spooky season. <laughs> let's go for spooky season. <laughs> let's <hey>? go. <laughs> so anyway, that is that is more merch news. And speaking of that, we have a few um, well, adjacent to that. We have some news for New Orleans Square, because I was thinking, you know, Haunted Mansion and, and things like that. So we do have news that Phantasmic is not a reappearing again until the spring, and when it does, it will be Sans Murphy. 
Murphy is the big dragon. Yeah, the the dragon burned down and and the dragon not coming back. No, so till um, spring. Well, the dragon not coming back at all. That's true. Phantasmic is not returning at all until spring. Now, so our, so here's 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 my theory and your okay. theory probably. Um, they're gonna change it a little bit, but I. I think this might be Disney's opportunity to introduce a drone show. We just discussed this, yeah. Um, we were watching a video of actually Universal Studios Hollywood, yeah, and they do the big, they, the, they have a little light show and stuff over the Hogwarts castle, and they have a new one this fall that's like, uh, it's Slytherin um, Death Eaters style. Yeah, when we went, it was like the houses. Yeah, it was all the houses. Yeah. This one, this one's like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do they call it? Like dark magic or something? I don't know what the actual name of it is, but it, it is dark, when the Death Eaters show it's up. It's dark something. Anyway, it's it's dark magic themed, and there's Death Eaters and stuff. And it, but then there's uh, Patronus, and yeah. they, and they, it's all it's it's a giant um, <coughs> like elk, like the Patronus that yeah, that Harry summons. Yeah, it's the stag that the he's, stag, yeah. yeah. And but it's all drones. Yeah. It looks very and cool. And it looks by very, the way. very cool. Like and I think cool. they could do something like that yeah. for Fantasmic. Yeah. I, and it says that they're looking at some new and innovative right. ideas. So I think that's going to be right I'm up. surprised that Disney hasn't done more drone stuff because, yeah. while well, drones are expensive up front, um, fireworks are expensive every day. Yeah. And you can't always, like, you could do drones more often than you could do fireworks because, of course, they don't want to do fireworks anytime that's, like, kind of windy. You can't do it in I've, any rain. You can't Drones do it. can't probably fly in too much wind mm. or rain either, but you still don't blow them up every time you use them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I don't unless, know. Unless they're weaponized theory. drones. Which well, is a, it's a totally different thing. Completely different topic. Uh-huh. 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 But, uh, yes, we had this discussion before, and I think you're on to something for sure. Um, speaking of Fantasmic not being there, the Jambalaya Jazz Band featuring Queenie will be performing nightly along the Rivers of America at Disneyland Park. I think this is super cool. It uh, looks so cool. This, um, uh, Let me see. July 21st it started, and it's every night through summer until question mark, basically. You know where they got the idea of this? Where? Star Wars night. Oh, so they do this at Star Wars night. Yeah, yes. they, they mm-hmm. have a... They, ha- they, they have the same barge going by on Star Wars night, and they have the Cantina Band mm-hmm. playing some sweet, sweet Star Wars jizz. <laughs> Which is great. That, that's what it's I called. I know, I know it you is. You can't censor me. That's what it's called. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Speaking of, again, further to New Orleans Square, Tiana's Palace is looking great. Oh man, that's is an it ever? Every, that's an any day they, now situation. They have honestly. put a lot of work into that. It's all it's all paint and, and elbow grease, but it looks really cool. It looks so good. It looks way better than the French market ever did. That always looked kind of bland to me. Well, the new sign is up now, and I just think this looks great. The colors on it are fantastic. It looks like Mardi Gras. I I hope they have a menu to match. Like I hope they have the the favorites that used to be there yeah. but i hope they have some new stuff too and and everyone's happy with it i don't know i'm we'll optimistic. see it, lo- it, it looks, looks fantastic really in videos mm-hmm. like that's all i can say totally um so tons of renovations tons of well just tons of construction period they've uh they've taken down <coughs> two trees on the old splash literally mound. the next thing i was gonna say perfect well i see look at your right, you can right tell through. i'm like moving through right yeah yeah, yeah okay yep yeah, we've got a Splash Mountain. Doesn't look like Splash Mountain anymore. There's no tree. Nope. Oof. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of sad. It actually. is kind of sad. It's, it's a little it's sad. It's kind of sad. I was pretty sad. I'm just so happy we got to ride it. Like I was, I didn't think I was gonna get to ride it at all, and I've ridden it a few times. So. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> rewind. Um, we had our we had our trip booked for April 2020. Yep. And then. Um, <laughs> some things happened and uh, uh, why would happen and while those some things were happening uh they announced that they were going to sh- shut down splash mountain yeah. and re re theme it yeah. to to tiana's bayou adventure or whatever and we're like oh no uh splash mountain is always was i was my answer to always what's your favorite ride not because they were changing it to tiana's we were just like well we're never gonna see it yeah. again and it was your favorite and mm-hmm. there's a lot of history there and 
that was kind of sad to us because we were supposed to go and then, yeah. But we were lucky enough. We, we got to go twice yeah. while it was still open. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's fine. Um, it and is still kind of sad to see the tree gone, but the, it's like bittersweet. The second time we knew for sure that was going to be our very, very yeah. last time riding it. And we have a we have a lovely ride photo of us <laughs> saying goodbye to the ride. Which I posted on our Instagram. Yes, you did. Um, saying goodbye. Saying goodbye. Saying goodbye we, to we, Splash Mountain. We did. And so that that was actually quite lovely. Yeah, I, it was. Yeah, it was. It, was, it was good to know that that was our very, very last time riding yeah. it as Splash Mountain. Yep. With Briar Rabbit and we Brer rode it Frox. a few times that that trip, oh, a lot. and then we did the mountain challenge, and then we said, well, let's go on it one more time and like say goodbye, and so we specifically went on it one more time to say goodbye, and we and did. I got very wet. I got very wet, and we but we waved goodbye at the camera. Yeah. Um. So now, yeah, trees are gone. Uh, it's it's looking different. So we're only like a year and a half away from Oof. it being something else. I don't know. Oof. So speaking of that whole area, we also have, um, we had a couple sippers come out. The big one, there was, oh yeah. So there was uh, two that I want to talk about. Well, there was also the popcorn thing, but anyway. So there was a really cool Mr. Toad's popcorn bucket. Mm -hmm. Then. He was in his car driving. Yeah, that was super cool. Was and then really there cool. was the Mickey on the train. That's out right Dis now. Disney Railroad. That looks Rail so cool. Railroad. Railway. Yeah. Um, train. And he, well woed. I heard somewhere was CK Holiday. Was that fresh baked? It might have been fresh baked. And that's a popcorn bucket. And then we have the sipper, which is the hat box ghost. This is This is the newest one. This is the number one sad merch that I would love to have, <laughs> but I can't. Um, nope. It, it it's it's just a sipper, but it, it looks really good. Wow. Well, I shouldn't just say just a sipper, but it look it, it's it's just fantastic. It's so good. It would be the greatest Halloween decoration. It would literally just go on our mantle. It lights up. Um, it 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 lights up his face, and then it lights up the, the face in the box in the hat box. It's just it's just fantastic. It's so I have him right here. The sipper has three light up modes: switching his head from the box to his face, just his face, and just in the box. Just fantastic. <laughs> like look at him. Like perfect. Perfect merch. Um, Good job on this one, Disney. Much better than your hat. Yeah, the the, the haunted mansion hat. It, funnily enough, the haunted mansion hat and the zipper was the same price. No wonder the zipper sold out <laughs> so fast. Okay. Anyway. So it looks really, really good. Um, okay. So now let's. Okay, we've got lots of construction going on. We have construction downtown Disney, but let's go because we're trying to do all this this news updates. Let's jump over to DCA. San Francisco. Oh, yeah, they've uh, they've done some good work on this. So it's not going to be fully completely done until the end of August, and the final, you know, like the final straw of it being done, um, the you know last. There's not going to be any straw there. I, I, know. I didn't know is going to be the Baymax meet and greet. But uh, in the meantime, about what would you say, three quarters of it, maybe even slightly more, <sighs> is done. Yeah. So I mean. Here's the thing. It, it's mostly a, a, a paint and polish mostly. type of mm -hmm. situation. They put up the the, the uh, big struts and stuff on the bridge. Yep. They haven't painted them, though, which no, is kind of weird. No, that's going to be a second last thing, I, I think. I, I would think it would be easier to paint them before you put them up, but <laughs> what do I know? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but they they put a lot of decals on all the, all the restaurants and stuff. Uh, Rita's uh, blenders is now turbine blenders. The turbine blenders rather than the Baja mm -hmm. blenders or whatever. Um, they've taken out the the beer truck and it, there's now a cerveceria. Yep, yep. Uh, which I want to go to because uh, yeah, beer, mm -hmm. beer, thumbs up. Um, but most of the things they just added a menu item or two. Menu item. They repainted the the lucky fortune cookery yep. sign and put they took it down and put it back up because they they painted it. all this stuff not a not a ton, not yep. a ton of menu changes a couple of new things but not nothing to break anyone's heart probably i don't know yeah anything you change in disneyland is gonna break someone's heart that's true <laughs> but no, nothing nothing crazy no that's uh, we're what... wait we're waiting for that baymax meet and greet totally um, we are not stand in line and meet the characters. I will stand in line to meet Baymax. 
I'm fist bumping Baymax so hard, and then I'll go. Yeah, every day. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't we care. We literally have not finished our decades look because we need to rewatch this movie. Oh, uh, Big Hero Six is one of my favorite Disney movies. And yeah, it's just it's recent. It's uh, crazy. It's just, yeah. I don't know. So anyway, th- that's gonna be the final one. But if you're at all interested in any of the you know new foods or anything like that there's lots of stuff up on youtube and instagram um we always recommend fresh baked as fresh like, baked is fantastic yep Ma- magic journeys also did some magic good journeys job, has yeah. done a good their great food is specifically mm. if you want to mm. look at it so we've been watching kind of that and looking at the food options um and just kind of waiting to see but it's three quarters of the way okay. open now i will i will talk about <laughs> one new food item oh, I know that we're saying. a little bit split on we are a little what do you mean a little, a little bit. bit split on quite uh, split we, we were very excited split. to see because they had some mexican street corn but at cochina cucamonga it's asian fusion mexican street yeah. fo- street corn yeah. and so there's some seafood sprinkles on it and that that just ruins the whole thing for you so for me for you, I, I think it looks awesome, uh, it looks and terrible. it looks delicious, and I will eat it. it and there's some terrible. spice to it. I why would I, you take delicious Mexican street corn and sprinkle fish on it? Well, because it tastes delicious. Gross. Obviously, <laughs> okay. We have different opinions on this. Yeah, well, you put pineapple on pizza. So. I do, and it tastes delicious. No, you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> delicious uh, fish elote is my my friend. And it's not yours. So. No, no, it's not. <laughs> but anyway, this does look super cool. So, you know, we're right up there for Tiana's Palace. We're right up there for, well, all of San Francisco. Getting, oh, we have to be getting close on the treehouse. And then this is news that I hadn't seen before. Oh, my goodness. We have so much news. The Disney Careers website has posted a new casting call. Do they have some accountant jobs? For a solo jazz pianist. Uh, that's not a counting job. Nope. No. To portray Joe Gardner from Disney Pixar Soul. Oh. Disney's live entertainment is actively seeking individuals for an upcoming offering located at Disneyland Resort. Is this going to replace Rogers the Musical? I don't know. That's my question. We were just talking about Rogers the Musical. Well, Rogers the Musical is supposed to be a limited engagement ending in the summer. If they're casting for something musical, are they going to do Soul the Musical in the Hyperion? Uh, Wouldn't that be nice at Christmas time, though? I could could see that. That'd be a nice holiday one. I could see that be for... (laughs) I don't know. Soul Soul was great. It was a good movie. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know. know. But anyway, I just saw this. This is news. That's a tough cast, though. You need someone who's an actor and can play the piano at a high level. But it, there's no other casting news. Just Joe Gardner. No cat or anything? Nothing. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe maybe it's like a cavalcade where he just plays the piano. Maybe, maybe he's going to be somewhere else. Like, I don't know. It's interesting, hey? <laughs> that, is, that is interesting. So we're going to be keeping our eye on that one. Okay. And now I have uh, sad news. So mm. this was a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Paul Rubens mm-hmm. passed away. Um, this this happened that's, earlier this that's week. That's Pee Wee Herman for yes. the uninitiated. But there's a strong, other than just pop culture icon, Obvious, obviously. there's a strong Disney. Very strong. Brandon? DJ Rex. Or Captain, Captain Rex. Captain Rex. Yeah. Yeah. He was also part of the film portion of the original Backlot Tour at Disney's the, MGM Studios. The, as Pee Wee Herman, though. Did you know what else he did for, for Disney? Well, What else did he do for Disney? Um, you know, Lock, Stock, and Barrel? Really? He was, um, Lock? Or, or, or Stock? stock? <laughs> or Barrel? He, Catherine O'Hara was, uh, Barrel. Okay, well, I, I, he, Catherine O'Hara was the girl. I don't remember yeah. which one was which. Yeah, um, and, uh, Danny Elfman was the other one. Which is but, fantastic, by the way. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul Rubens. Rubens was was one of Lock, Stock, and Barrel, and there's there's a clip of them online singing live, the three of them really? singing, singing Sandy Claus <gasps> together, and it's really it's amazing. Lock. Like he was Lock. He was Lock. Okay, I was right. Um, <laughs> and that's 
really cool because that's one I didn't quite recognize. No, DJ Rex was like yeah, I mean, obvious. D- D- yeah, Rex Rex is very obvious. It sounds or Captain Rex. He basically sounds like Pee Wee Herman. In fact, we in looked it up form. and we're like, is this Pee Wee Herman or is it someone doing a Pee Wee Herman impression? Yeah, yeah. Um, but luck, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, so that there, there's another and as one. a huge Nightmare Before Christmas fan, I did not know that, mm. so I love that. I knew Catherine O'Hara. Paul, I, Paul Rubens was a talented fella because, yeah. like, some, so something sad. like Pee Wee Herman is tough to pull off, mm-hmm. and he did. And you, you need to watch Pee Wee Herman's I Big know, Adventure. So anyway, that is that's sad news, but uh, yeah, he, uh, well, f cancer. Um, yeah, he he fought it. Yep. Privately for years. And, yeah, it, it didn't literally was a private yeah, thing. Yeah. Okay, super quickly, Paradise Pool at, at Disney's. Paradise Pier Hotel will reopen this, well, it's any day now. It's this week it's reopening. It's probably today, actually, because it was Saturday when we're recording this. Um, So that's cool. More steps forward in that one. We also have at the Disney Gallery at Disneyland, we have um, a bunch of uh, display Uh, for... Like Disneyana, you mean, yeah. uh, Yeah, for the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Including the Madame Leota costume worn by Jamie Lee Curtis as well as the film's Crystal One Ball. of the original Scream Queens. Yeah, that's right. Jamie Lee Curtis just cool. keeps getting more and more cool uh, every year, and that's saying something, because she started with Halloween. We we, we, we talk about um, people that you'd want to have a beer with or a coffee oh, with yeah, or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's a great answer. She would be high up on that list for sure. I would sure. N- never <laughs> think of it off the top of my head, but you are 100% correct. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love her. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as... The crystal ball mm-hmm. is there too. Isn't that cool? Um, yeah. So basically, we're just like leaning in to the leaning into the Halloween stuff all the time. The first birdhouse, oh, was also removed at Splash Mountain. We talked about Splash Mountain arenas, but also the former Steakhouse Fifty Five that's been sitting there completely empty in Disneyland Hotel. Yeah, they're working on it. Completely blocked off, and the sign has been removed. Interesting. So that's interesting. Are they are they making <laughs> something else? Or Maybe they... they're putting a jazz pianist doing Joe Gardner there. I don't know, but this is new. I I thought they should change it, um, because like in Disney World they ha- don't they have like the nineteen twenty three yes. steakhouse or mm-hmm. something. I I thought I always thought that they should do that at the Disneyland Hotel. I think it would it would fit mm-hmm. well better. Everything than... is so much Disney history there. Like it's perfect. And it. And it fits there because it is Disney history. It like, is. Yeah, like, That's exactly right. Like, it, it, yeah, you, you can fake history in Disney World so much. Hey, but... you know what? Instead of call, instead of twenty three, call it fifty five. Well, that's <laughs> why it was Steakhouse Fifty Five. Yeah, but I mean, like, just do instead of doing it like as a steakhouse, right. do it just twenty three, but just change the name of it. So it's different. 1955, but like yes. have everything original. Di- yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, <coughs> yeah, they should do something, though, because that's just wasted space. Yeah, well, apparently they are. Maybe. I, mean, I don't know. It Harder makes sense. Make down. a restaurant. You make money off of restaurants. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, that is, there's a ton of Disneyland news. Of course, the big movie um, is Haunted Mansion being out. Haunted and- Mansion super duper bomb <coughs> um but i haven't heard terrible things about it it's it's better than the eddie murphy haunted mansion we ha- we haven't seen it yet mm-hmm. um it's super bomb people are like why did this come out in the summer because they want to have it on disney plus for the halloween yeah, season i get it that's gonna be the big halloween thing um so that's fine but it's not horrible but it's not very good and it it did totally bomb it. Like, it's, yeah. it is losing money hardcore. People just aren't seeing it, but I have, like, critics any not Disney withstand. fan, Yeah, they like Disney it. Any Disney fan that has seen it <clears throat> kind of likes it. There's a lot of Easter eggs and stuff. So right. we will probably tolerate. I will, I will love it. You will I'm love it. Sure. I will tolerate it. Whatever. That's fine. Um, but, yeah, definitely super bombing. <laughs> and speaking of bombing, what we're going to talk about later. Okay. We've got like we've gone through so much news. Do you want to just go? No, I can't, oh, okay, go ahead. I kind of want to talk about all the Marvel news. Okay, Marvel. Let's do Marvel. No, you got to do it. Let's do it. Well, so we are in the midst of this whole 
um, writer and actor strike. So all this stuff has to be taken with a grain of salt because no contracts can be signed right now, technically. Unless, it's true. Unless they're under, unless the, they're under the table. And under the table, or somewhere. if they were previously signed and then not just made public, which right. is the other... Which is a possibility. Especially in the Marvel world. But the next, like, major, major project, which mm-hmm. is, like, the most major project in my heart. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. There's been lots of rumors about this in the past. In fact, I've shared, we've talked about yep. some, like like, pretty hardcore... Uh, casting lists. Yep. All false. Totally. They're gone. Nope. Yep. All gone. Nope. We um, don't. Apparently, Adam Driver was offered the yep. role of Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards. Turned it down. And he that, was a big rumor. That that that's what that's what we're hearing. Um, I'm I'm okay with that. I love Adam Driver. I think he's awesome. Just not necessarily. I did not Mr. see Fantastic. him as Reed Richards. Yeah. I did not see it. I I agree. I love Adam Driver. I think he's one of the most talented actors working right now. Um, I'm not a huge like I'm Fantastic Four is a big part oh, place it, in your heart. It, it, yeah. But Adam you, Driver, you don't care. You no, don't care, I don't no. care. But I like, I get what you're saying. I guess is my thing. Right. Um. <laughs> so what we're hearing is Vanessa Kirby is cast as Sue Storm. Who was? Um, she's in some other stuff that we haven't seen. Yeah, but sh- so, which is interesting because because what I was gonna say is the casting that we've heard. It's kind of minor. Yeah, like, they're not scale. Adam Driver. You that is an A list celebrity. None of the ones who've been cast, theoretically, been cast. Sorry. Well, yeah. So the the, the last casting that we heard was Adam Driver, who of course like Star Wars mm-hmm, and yeah. all that. Um, and Margot Robbie as Sue Storm, of course. Uh, Barbie. Barbie now, um, mm-hmm. but like uh, Harley Quinn before that yeah. and all the other stuff that she was in. Um, but yeah, this uh, Vanessa Kirby, what is she in? Um, oh, she, apparently she was in A Midsummer's Night Dream in 2010. That's, that's for you only. Uh, I saw A Midsummer Night's Dream in 2010. Yeah, apparently Who she was... Who did she play? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, okay. And As You Like It. She's a Shakespeare fan. She's apparently a Shakespeare and lady. And a streetcar named Desire. Yeah, uh, and she's apparently born in <coughs> Wibbleton, so she must be a yeah. tennis fan. I don't know. Um, she was Princess Margaret in, in The Crown on Netflix. And she was in Mission Impossible Mission 6 Impossible and 7. Mission Impossible we had heard yes. about. Yeah. yeah, so um, that's where she kind of got the big time... So again, uh, until it's official. Until it's official, we don't know. This is just um, rumors. Just However, looking at, looking at pictures of her, I'm in favor. She kind of looks like a Sue Storm, and just like giving her resume, mm-hmm. I can. I'm, I'm okay. Like okay? she's she's the right level. She's not huge. Yeah. But like ready ready for some some MCU. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is Joseph Quinn. This one I'm super excited about. And if you don't know that name. He played Eddie Munson. You know Eddie. <laughs> Go Eddie. Yeah. Uh, on Stranger Things. And he. Did he, we both just like yeah, rock on? Yeah, you just gotta rock out with Eddie. You gotta rock out with Eddie. He's gonna be Johnny Storm. So Theoretically. Theoretically. And I'm in favor of both of those. I don't I don't know. Whatever. That's fine. We don't know who Reed is gonna be. We don't know who the thing is gonna be. It doesn't really matter who the thing is gonna be unless they have they're a terrible all gonna be CGI'd voice. Anyway, the thing has to be CGI, so whatever. Mm-hmm. But yay, Eddie! <sighs> justice for Eddie! Yeah, justice, justice for, for Eddie. Eddie! He's gonna just- be Johnny Storm. He's gonna flame on, and we're gonna go. Yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I I just please make the Fantastic Four good, <laughs> please. That's all I ask. So now, but everything with Marvel, like everything that is related to writers and actors and everything, is giant question marks anyway. Oh, it's, it must, like, it's hard for Hollywood in general. (coughs) Anything, your your writers are on strike, so you can't write new scripts. Your actors Mm -hmm. are also on strike, so you can't film anything now. Um, That must be really, really tough, but... Marvel and Kevin Feige must be just like pulling out their freaking hair right now because yeah. they have all these plans and it's a domino effect when yeah. something gets delayed everything does and yeah. I I can I cannot imagine how miserable 
Kevin Feige's life must be right now. Um, well, because other studios, you have, or, or company studios, everything, you have, well, we have these plans for these movies. And if this one gets delayed, okay, like it might affect budgets for other things. But not only does it do that, but it's like we can't tell the story in 2020, I don't know, seven if we don't tell the one in 2026 and 2025 and 2024 and tw- you know what I mean? Like, it's such yeah, a the, mess. The MCU, at a bare minimum, has a five year <laughs> plan. Yep. And when a year and a half of that gets blown out, like. Right after a pandemic where everything got messed well, up. Well, yeah, the pandemic messed everything up, and they're, they're still recovering from that, mm-hmm. which we're going to talk about in our main feature, which we're running behind on. But that's fine. We're just going to be a long episode, because we haven't, we haven't been with you for a while, so yep. that's, that's all good. an extra long episode. Uh, so, yeah, I don't I don't know. This, this, this whole strike thing is, is just wild There's for the There's a lot MCU. of effects to it, yeah. And to be fair... I'm on the side of the writers and the actors. Yeah, like me too. Yes, Pay your writers and your actors, period. Your your high end actors, they make bank. That's fine. Um, your high end writers, <coughs> sorta, kind of do okay. Um, that's fine. But it's everybody else. Like yeah. the guild is e- represents everybody, yep. and that's the whole point of a union, right? Uh, and your your low end actors do not do very well especially in the day and age of streaming where they have kind of different rules and that's that's what they're striking about and they need to make money so they can eat food you want we we, we just talked about the pandemic we just mentioned the pandemic mm-hmm. i think that one there are many lessons we learned that nece- we should have learned that we didn't necessarily learn but no, one of no them, one learned it no one learned anything but, but that's one fine. of the ones we should have learned was how important any of the arts are to us. Because Absolutely. when we were stuck in our houses... We watched The Tiger King. <laughs> I forgot about that. We sat there and watched <laughs> The Tiger King. So Everyone did. Yeah. So that should tell you what the arts means to people. And We, we will watch The Tiger King. It means we watch The Tiger King. imagine if we had something better. That's what I mean. Like, we were so... Yes, a lot of it was escapism or there's nothing else to do or whatever, but that there was a lot of meaning to it Mm -hmm. and to the arts, to media. And when all this, like, so, yeah, it's important to people. um, Pay them accordingly. Full stop. Period. End of sentence. The the arts are important and not everybody can do it, so. Yeah. And you know what? I appreciate them. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah. I mean, pay everybody, but... Well, yes. This specific strike is about that specific industry, so pay them. Yeah. Yeah, There you go. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Main topic? Okay. Disney Plus and chill. Okay. So, today we are going to talk, or this week, we're talking about Secret Invasion. Now, this is a spoiler alert because we're not going to, like, hold back from anything like that. But we're also not going to, like, go through episode by episode details. No, we're just talking high However, level. However, there are some issues. And I think we're going to mostly talk well, about that. Well, it's a spoiler alert because um, all 12 of you that have already seen this show. Exactly. Uh, won't need the spoiler alert. But everyone else needs the spoiler alert because yeah. uh, it apparently was not very well watched. So we were talking, or I mentioned a couple of minutes ago when we were talking about the news about some of our favorite YouTubers, right? Yeah. Another one that we really like is Ordinary Adventures. And Peter from Ordinary Adventures tweeted a thing. And I think it sums it up perfectly. And it was like five years ago, if you told me there was a Marvel television series about secret invasion starring nick fury and a bunch of scrolls and nobody watched it i would have thought you were insane yeah but it's 100 percent what happened Uh, the the worst um as far like (coughs) ratings for streaming is a little bit tough um but by far by every metric the worst rated mcu disney plus show popular critics everything Across the board. By, by, and you know what? Probably deserved. I think so, too. And it started strong. We've talked, we talked, like, (laughs) we saw the first three episodes and we had our Marvel Minute um, before we left. 
and I liked the way it was going. I did too. Uh, the, th- the thing about Disney Plus shows is that it gives them the opportunity to explore different genres, and that's what this was going for. It was kind of like a, a spy thriller type of situation, and I was liking the direction it was going, and then it kind of fell off the rails. So a lot of people, when it started, were like, oh, we had Andor for Star Wars. Secret Invasion is going to be the equivalent of that for Marvel. And that very sh- spy. It and it started been. that way. It Didn't sh- it feel that it, way? It felt a little bit that way. Maybe a little a little lighter, but that's fine because it's Marvel. Because it's Marvel. Marvel should be a little lighter. And Andor was absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. So I was super optimistic. Love Nick Fury. I think I remember after the first episode... I said they should just have, you know, subtitled it Nick Fury acts his pants off or something like that. Yeah. So Sam J- Sam Jackson <laughs> went for it. Um yep. well, I mean, the acting in it was not the problem at and, all. Um the writing in it isn't one the problem either. However, none of it came together. Well, here okay. First problem is apparently they had extensive reshoots. Which makes sense when you know that watching it. When you're watching it, it 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 feels a little bit disjointed. Yeah, that was my. Um, that's the big word I kept saying. It was it was only six episodes, and it could have been more. Or, but it, but it could also it would have I I feel it could have made an excellent movie. I think so too. You 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 just I you, think so you too. just make it a movie. You cut out the fluff of those six episodes, and you hone in on. On make it a Mission Impossible type yeah. of, of of event, and you spend that the 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 whole budget of the series in a movie, yeah. and and it would be better. I agree. They, ki- they killed off some major characters, and like we didn't care. And it and it felt it felt like a wet fart. It felt un it felt unearned. Yeah. So I. Mm. And then you had these big moments with characters you didn't care about, but you killed off these other ones, and then. So, <laughs> okay. My number one problem with okay. this is you have all these leg- legacy characters in it, but then you go ahead and cast Amelia Clark, who's fantastic. I love her, but she's got to she's got to be a major character now. Yeah, and you've never you have never seen her before, you've you've never seen her before, mm-hmm. and now she's a major character, and so you got to give her big moments because because Amelia Clark, big ticket, big yep. ticket. Which uh, is why we're actually not disappointed with casting not big ticket actors for Fantastic Four. Exactly. You, you don't you don't let the casting dictate the story. Yeah. You don't let the casting dictate the story, which is what happened here, and it's a little bit unfortunate because there was some good stuff going on, and it's not Amelia Clark's fault. She did a good job, and her char- <laughs> her character actually was kind of interesting. Yeah. But. All these other characters kind of got pushed aside for her character. Well, but it, and at the same time, you're still like, well, to me, this was supposed to be like a Nick Fury story. Mm. So then they're trying to tell his story while trying to tell her story. So they're both getting like the short end of it. Like neither of them are getting a great story. Well, and then, and then you have the whole thing about the scrolls, and you don't, and you don't know who's. Who, who's real and who's not which should be the story of a secret invasion you would think so that should be the focus and yeah you have that a little bit but you mostly have sam jackson acting and then it being unearned because it's not actually it's not actually nick fury yeah that's okay yeah which sucks (laughs) so let's explain this because you just said something that didn't seem to make sense if you haven't seen this yeah okay so explain well in the final episode the character that Amelia Clark plays, Gaia, impersonates Nick Fury for the final showdown and goes all out like Nick Fury. It was di- great. Dying. It's it's this whole thing. It's very tense, but at the same time, you kind of know that it's not actually Nick mm-hmm. Fury. Like, you know, it's not. And then it turns out that it's Gaia as a scroll that there's. Because there's radi- scrolls are immune to radiation, yeah. and this whole thing is like in Chernobyl, basically. And so you have this like really emotional moment of Nick Fury coming to terms with his past of, of using and abusing scrolls with the the scroll that's mad about it, and it's not real. Yeah, none of it's real. None of it's real, and I mean, Secret Invasion is all about what's real and what's not, but. 
it was kind of anticlimactic that yeah. way. Like, I don't know. I don't know. The other, the thing that bothered me, I mentioned the writing. Mm-hmm. The thing that bothered me was inconsistencies. So, like, Gaia as Nick Fury is talking about things like emotions after the snap. Mm-hmm. She didn't and like, know. Very, very personal stuff. Like that, that is, seems kind of cool. My feelings. Seems kind of cool if it was actually coming from Nick Fury because yeah, we we, we care about ex- that character. We haven't explored what the impact of the snap was on a personal level a lot, like emotionally. And, yeah, yeah, and and having that talked about is cool. And then it's oh, it's not real. None of it's real. It's yeah, yeah, that sucks. And then we have this whole big focus on Nick Fury's marriage. Yeah. We did have a line, um, was that Winter Soldier? One of the Captain America movies. I don't know. Anyway, where he said, does say he's married. So, like, we knew, we knew, at least he said, I mean. Yeah, but you don't trust anything Nick Fury says exactly. anyway. And, yes, he was married. Which, which is part of the sell of a whole secret invasion thing. You don't trust what anybody says, and also yeah. Nick Fury doesn't, yeah. Ah. <sighs> There's so many problems. It, there's so many problems. And there were things that, like, you could tell were edited out. Like, at the end, you have this scene where Gaia and, like, they see this room full of, Olivia like, Coleman's character. Oh, by the way. She kicked serious uh, yeah, butt. Yeah, no. She's she's awesome. I want to see her character more, and I, I want to see her against Julia Louis-Dreyfus' <laughs> Val, yeah. Val character. Uh, like, a lot. I, I want I want to see Olivia them... Coleman I, I like, want to see them just talking to each other, like a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> oh my god. Like, it's funny, because Dreyfus was in Seinfeld. Exa- exactly. I just... Just I I want to see that so bad. Every time she, she was, was the, on the screen, she was the best part she was of the this series. Best part of everything. And and if you would have told me that at the start when I like after episode one when like because yeah, Sam you know, Jackson was yeah. was kicking butt. Um, no, Olivia Coleman was absolutely one hundred percent best part from start. I to will finish. I will literally watch a show of her just talking. She was amazing. She was absolutely amazing. She she, she went all the way and like just. Just yeah. perfect. It was great. So, yeah, more of her okay. in the MCU, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. So, anyway, she and, at the end, Gaia's character are in this room with, like, sleeper scrolls, I guess. It, it, but you don't know what the heck is going on. It, it was very out of context and didn't make any sense. And <laughs> But it was no like one knows. supposed like, to know. I don't know. It wasn't hinted, like, what is this? They're just like, oh. No, it just made no sense. Yeah, it was just in this room. And then... And also... Um, okay, so the the big the big reveal. So if you don't know Secret Invasion from the comics, there was a bunch of big reveals of like who the uh, superheroes were that yes. were being impersonated by sc- Skrulls. So they they kind of did this in, in this one. There was one Avenger, quote unquote, that was a Skrull. It's an Avenger. Um, Rhodey, War Machine, mm-hmm. was a Skrull in this. And uh, and then at the end they they pull him out of his state like the real Rhodey mm-hmm. was pulled out of his stasis and they and they literally look at him and say how long were you in here and he doesn't answer and it it's a nebulous thing and literally the director of the series because there was only one director who directed hmm. every episode I didn't know that um doesn't know interesting he okay he, these he, are the hints though. He is in a hospital gown. He's in a hospital gown. That matches he, the one. And he's helped out. So people think that he was kidnapped shortly after the events of Civil War. Which, which meant which that I, I, I don't like that because that means Infinity War. That means Endgame. That means the guy who cried and comforted people at Tony's funeral was to- not Rhodey. C- cried at Tony's death deathbed yeah at Endgame. literally the second last no. person he talked to but I, yeah. and then when we see the way that Rhodey was in this show Rhodey was a jerk and i'm like though that, that doesn't equal each other well that was scroll that well was, scroll Rhodey that was scroll that was scroll yes okay 
Scrody, so, Scrody can be however yeah, he wants. That's, that's fine. fine. But he wasn't like that then. Like, those two things are not the same. So this scroll acting like Rody now oh, cannot I see. be this scroll acting like you, Rody then. You don't think that scroll has it in them to yeah. to cry at Tony's That's deathbed. what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what? You're right. I, I don't think that scroll... And the funny thing is that this is a female scroll. Which is that, was, that actually I really like. <laughs> I enjoyed that a lot. A female scroll impros- impersonating Rody. Um... But yeah, I don't. You're right. I don't think that scroll has it in them. This scroll was just a straight to, up jerk. To be sincere enough to cry when yeah. when Tony Stark is dying in Endgame. Yeah. And also, hats off for actor for for this one. Don Cheadle. Um, Don, Don Cheadle did a great job. Cha- Very even. Changed. Totally like, changed. Mannerisms. Yes, a jerk, but also there was like when kind I say feminized. sass. Yes, there was a yeah. feminized sass to it that didn't exist previous to this. So if it was a scroll acting, it was a different scroll. Don, Don Cheadle can act. Yeah. So for sure. There was for sure some solid acting here. And this is the other thing. There was like a really cool moment between what well, between Rhodey and uh Nick Fury and the, because there's the one of the cool things about Marvel shows is it's like, what's it actually about? Because, yes, it's like a comic book story, but there's different things it's actually about. And Nick Fury often talked about, like, this being about, like, racial stuff. Yes, they, they, they both happen to be black, yes. Yes, but anyway, other moments when he's talking to Gaia or talking to whomever, there was, like, stuff about that. Mar- and you had this Marvel's really... always had, like, even in the comics, they've always had, like, <coughs> illusions and Totally. Metaphors. We have an episode about that. Oh, yeah. Um, but they had a really cool moment about that, where if this was actually what the show was looking at, that was important. And then you find out, oh, Don, like, sorry, Rhodey, I was Don Cheadle's character. Rhodey is a scroll, And then and that was and okay. Nick is acting. So it's like even the authenticity of, like, some of the cool moments that was, were cheapened. That was okay, because the scene where he's he's... Nick Fury is playing the race card on Rhodey. He's testing him. And he's he's he he's solidifying in his own mind that he's actually a scroll. He has his suspicions. Mm-hmm. But he's solidifying. That, this is when Nick Fury's getting fired, is what I'm talking about. Oh, you're talking about the fire. Yes. I'm talking about the, the, the whiskey scene. Yeah, no, that part I actually didn't have as much of a problem mm. with. Because at that point we already like we knew that Rhodey was a scroll because you knew Rhodey was a scroll, but at that point it had been confirmed. Yeah, so there when, was like when Nick Fury's getting fired, I don't know. Nick Fury was not he didn't have his mojo at that point. So. It was like it but it was like a cool talking moment and Rhodey made some really had some really cool lines in there. And then, but it was a scroll doing it, and it was Nick not being at his best. I don't know. It was a whole thing where it had this, like, great potential and had all these really cool moments. And then it, like, fell short yeah, on all of them. I, I didn't feel too bad about that scene, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I, I liked it when it was going on, and then afterwards Nick, I was like, oh, meh. <laughs> I, I was okay with it. Nick Fury was supposed to still be on his back foot, and... And Scrody was <laughs> I, just just scrodying all over Rody. the place. It sounds so inappropriate when you say that. It's not. It's not my name. Other people have come up with that. This is Scrody. Is um, it? I did like uh, excellent acting. Inconsistencies, reshoots. Yeah, there needed to be a straight through line. Yeah, it needed to focus more on spy thriller, and. Amelia Clark's character needed to be not cast as Amelia Clark, mm. so it wouldn't be as important. Or it needed to be a you minor to... thing that you were setting up for later. That would have been fine. <laughs> you needed the big moments to be established characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. You d- just killing off Talos and. Oh, and so anticlimactically. Yeah. It's... Talos and. And what was that episode two? We lost. How long was she in the MCU? It was like something 10 like ten years. Oh my god! Anticlimactically killing off. No episode two. We kill off Maria Hill. Agent Sparkles. Agent. Episode two and. Yeah, that's what I said. We have. It's like not even a plot device almost. It it doesn't it doesn't pay off as any stakes. It just 
they just kill her. And I mean, like, I actually understand. It's like barely mentioned again. I understand from like a literary perspective how that's supposed to be like shocking and gut wrenching to just like, oh, and this character that you've been like with for over a decade, she's dead now. But they didn't do that. No. They died. He barely has like a breath for her, and then it's used as like maybe barely kinda. collateral later, but mo- not even for like her death. For we saw you kill her. Yeah. Because barely, it's, um, yeah. it was. It was fridging, but not even <laughs> usefully. <laughs> yeah, it was... Like, fridging is problematic, but at least sometimes it has a it has a benefit. But there was no... It there didn't was feel not... like there was any point no, to this. No, no, it was... You, you, you killed Agent Sparkles, and it, and it was terrible. Oh, I lied. And this then, was and episode then one. Even, that was episode one. Even worse, you mm-hmm. killed Soren off-screen. <laughs> oh, off-screen. That was... Yes, you are correct. Yeah. Like, what the heck? And so much so that you're even like, is she actually dead? Yeah, there was, there was fan theories that she was going to come back. She was hiding as someone else. Nope. No, she's, she's just, she's just dead. She's just dead. Off screen. No, yeah. In a movie. It's like, as a mention, like, not even In a couple movies, including Spider-Man. Nope. She's dead. Meh. It's fine. No one cares. Whatever. Like, what the heck? Like, why? Like, so stupid. Why do you set up this character that we're supposed to care about and then be like, as an offhanded comment? Like, instead of bringing in Maria Hill, you kill Soren in, in, in that first episode. Yeah, and then have, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Talos and Gaia have, like, something, we care more about... Something to... Gaia could have still been with the Rebels, <laughs> and then, like, oh, they killed my mom, this is why I'm having doubts about this cause, like... Yeah, exactly. Okay, I just fi- I fixed half of the se- I fixed half of it. It's only half of it though. Yeah, you can still kill her off episode one if that's what you want to do. But you don't like. I don't know. It's very disappointing. I just it started. There were some really cool moments, especially in the first few episodes, that I really liked, and it seemed very promising. And I thought it was going to be this really cool premise, but. I'm left with questions not in a, like, ooh, I want to know, but, like, holes. Why? Like, like why? holes in the story. And and it sucks because a lot of the blame is being taken because there's too, quote-unquote, too much Marvel content now, so they mm-hmm. can't handle it. I like that amount of Marvel content. I like looking forward to a Secret, in- Secret Invasion yeah. episode. I like looking forward to a Moon Knight episode. I like having Marvel shows on Disney Plus to look forward to. Yeah, me too. I like having three movies a year plus Disney Plus shows. <laughs> me like, too. it's good. Just but, do good ones. But the writing and like through line has to has to also be good. Yeah. And so this is showing that it isn't. It's like it lacks direction right now. Kevin Bot is is not doing holding Kevin, up his someone not, control alt delete okay because like you got to figure out what is going on here yeah with Kevin Bot yeah he just just maybe needs a reset I don't know you just, know what really concerns me though <laughs> leaving from this what's we the, have the Marvels coming up next yeah Captain Marvel got a lot of flack for really stupid reasons Miss Marvel got a lot of flack for really stupid reasons and now we're all bringing it all and together. now we're having we're bringing it all together, and which is kind of cool, but now we have all this negativity coming out of Secret Invasion, plus we have a character that may or may not affect the Marvels, but I think we're just going to ignore Gaia. Gaia is super powered. Well, okay, so that this is the biggest, biggest problem from Secret Invasion. You now have a character that has been, he's a super scroll that's been inundated with <laughs> DNA from Basically every Avenger. Making ha- specific point to say that Ms. Marvel is included in this. Ha- no, no, Captain Marvel. Yes, yeah, sorry, Captain Marvel. I Car- said Ms. Carol, Marvel. Carol, right. Carol Captain Danvers. Captain Marvel. Um, a big, big part of the big show, again, <clears throat> um, what I like so much about She-Hulk is how they made fun of the uh, the third act yeah. uh, CGI showdown. Yeah. What did they do in this? Have a big, meaningless CGI showdown. But this one was actually entirely meaningless and like... There was there was a bad CGI moment that actually took me out of it while I was watching it. Oh, oh, the Drax arm. Yeah, the Drax oh. arm was terrible. Um, but the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, 
She Hulk should just show up right now and be like, "Come on, guys, <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just say?" It's unfortunate <laughs> because it was kind of cool watching all the Avengers powers kind of show. Yeah, up. and the mannerisms. I like the mannerisms. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm very wor- worried for the Marvels because I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna bomb hard, and if that bombs hard. We don't. We have the writer strike on. We have the actor strike on now. Well, like, what's gonna happen to the MCU? I don't know. Like, Guardians three did well, but like Ant Man, like it was still wasn't like amazing. Ant Man and Man Quantumania did not do well. Ant Man started strong and like dropped off hard. So it's it's a trend, and um, we just need more Shang Chi. Probably <laughs> is is what I'm thinking. But I feel like it's set up. And, so in teacher and, world, we always say, "Oh, you're setting up for failure." Yeah, I feel like it set up the Marvel. This show set up the Marvels for failure. Yeah, the the Marvels is is. So guys, go watch the Marvels when it comes out. The Marvels is in tough sledding, and um, on the other side of the fence, the, the the DC universe is not helping superheroes in any way, shape, or form. Right. Um, the biggest movie from DC, The Flash. Just. And- just an utter failure because they, well, they're just, they're just like doing terrible things all the way along. And then they're like, we're going to change things, but we're still going to release this other movie. And also our main actor is a serial assaultist and kind of crazy. So cultist, don't forget that he may be running his own cult. Possibly. I don't know. Anyway, he's, they are mentally troubled. Yes. And still leading the movie, which may or may not be good, but there's all this baggage, and also they're completely cutting off that universe. So Well, yeah, so it was weird, because their announcements about what they were going to be doing with DC is like, we really want you to care about this movie, but then after we're going to immediately cut ties with everyone from it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, then why do I care about this big movie? That That is... The problem with having a connected universe in general. So anyway, I'm eh. concerned for the Marvels because I'm really looking forward to it. And I feel like this show set it up for failure and it was already going to be, like you said, writer strike, actor strike, people not going to movies the same way they used to. Um, unless it's Barbenheimer. Unless it's Barbenheimer. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, already the Miss Marvel and already Captain Marvel all of that kind of like tied up in there. People are complaining about not knowing characters if they showed up in the show. So then we also have, is her name Photon yet? Mm, not yet. Photon S. It's going to be. But it's so like there's all of those concerns that already was just starting Rambo. with. Just <laughs> Yes. All the stuff it was already starting with that was like, it still looks really cool on and the, I'm still like excited. On the excited. plus side, um, WandaVision was one of the more watched Marvel shows because it true. was the first one. And it was and also amazing. Uh, fantastic, yes. Amazing. Fantastic, yeah. Still the one, my favorite. Um, oh, can we have a positive Marvel news for a minute? Loki season Loki two. Loki season two trailer. <laughs> Looks so good. Save us, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston gets to save us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Loki season two looks pretty good. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for Me it. Me too. I it, it looks like it might have some more time time hijinks that I was hoping for in season Dumb one. Jumping around and stuff like that. Yeah. Like some alternate history stuff. We'll I'm see. hoping a little bit. I don't know. The trailer only shows the first two episodes anyway, so we'll Every see. Every time. So anyway, I feel like I'm worried for the Marvels. Is the end of that. I <laughs> I'm worried for the MCU. <laughs> Mostly because I don't want it to fail before the Fantastic Four come out. Agreed. I want a good... I just want one. Just give me one good Fantastic Four movie. Just one, please. So, okay. Brandon. Yeah? We... This is a long episode. Yeah. Is, is there going to be a good Fantastic Four movie? I hope so. Okay. But I have a question for you. The 12. Are you secretly a Skrull? Um, possibly. You wouldn't know if I was, would you? Well, let's find out. First Although, question. Although, my nose was bleeding earlier today, and it wasn't purple. That's so true. It's pro- true. I'm probably not a Skrull. First question. Can you distinctly remember being 10 years old? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to click yes, of course. Mm. Which of these Marvel heroes do you think is really a Skrull in disguise? Captain America, 
Captain Marvel, uh, Captain America, uh, like OG Captain America. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, yeah. Black Steve, Widow. Steve Rogers. You Steve mean, Rogers, yeah. yes. Uh, so Steve Rogers, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, the Hulk, Thor, or Gamora. It, it's Steve Rogers. Like, he was frozen in the ice <laughs> for all that time. It's very easy for a Skrull to replace That's true. him. Totally. F- mm-hmm. And he was also, uh, Captain America was also a Skrull in the comics, yeah. famously. Mm hmm. Do you generally believe there are aliens living among us? Totally. I think so, but I'm not sure. I don't really think so, or no way. Um, I've watched enough ancient aliens to know <laughs> the answer is totally it's aliens. <laughs> I, I don't... I, I don't uh... Do you want me to say totally, or I think... Totally so? it's oh, okay, aliens. Okay, okay. Well, okay, so this is a picture one. Which of these cats is an alien? So this is a picture one. Uh, there's a cat yawning, a gray cat looking at you... There's a, a cat that looked confused, which is the one Brandon picked. And finally, which of the Infinity Stones would you like most to have? The Space time, time Stone, stone. The Mind Stone, The Reality stone. stone, The Power Stone, The Time, time stone, stone, The Soul Stone. Time Stone. Okay. Time Stone. Oh, you are so a scroll. Yeah. But a very convincingly disguised one. Well done. I'm, I'm a smart scroll. <laughs> what can you say? It's, it's the Time Stone. Mm. You, you take the Time Stone. Yeah. That's probably why I'm a Skrull, because it's the Time Stone, and you can, like, do all sorts of things with the Time Stone. I can't say I've Everything ever... else is stupid. You want the Time Stone. I can't say I've ever thought of stealing the Time Stone. I've come to bargain, Dormammu. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. That's a, that is a great moment. Anything else to add about Secret Invasion, other than... It they should have had a Time Stone. They should have had a Time fine. Stone, yeah. uh, And you fixed it. Literally... Literally everything could be solved by the time stone. Also, don't cast Amelia Clark in a in a TV show as a new character, mm. unless unless it's like uh, ten years ago and it's and it's Game of Thrones. It was fine. She was she was good casting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, scroll language spoken by Amelia Clark sounds like Dothraki. Sounds just like Dothraki. <laughs> she she spoke a little too much Dothraki in her history and scroll language sounds like Dothraki <laughs> for sure. Yeah, like we it. both said it like immediately. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like Dothraki. Okay. <laughs> it was really good. It, like, yeah, that, no, that was like, if you had been recording our live reaction, we both said yeah. it was oh, Dothraki. Oh, it was Dothraki. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that is our show this week. Thank you, El Mule, who's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website, which is disneyawixsitecom slash podcast. We can also find a link to our social media accounts. We are currently on Facebook, Instagram, and X. I'm still saying Twitter. X. Uh, I'm, we're not really on X anymore. Uh, no, no. I, don't I even worry we, about it. We're not on X anymore. Well, I mean, we have an account, but we don't even update it anymore. I, I have not looked at it in a long time. Yeah. I, I try to go on my personal twitter x account Mm -hmm. and it's horrible i don't even bother okay we are on instagram and facebook there you go mostly we should just start a tiktok account in protest honestly we might i don't know we might but i don't know (laughs) you you noticed by my silence that that was yeah a funny you can find disney a episodes Mm -hmm. on all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms and on our youtube channel adventures a here's your friendly reminder stitcher which is one of the most common podcast streaming platforms is closing out later this month so you can only find us on there for another couple weeks (laughs) r.i.p stitcher if you You were better than twitter oh yeah If you've rated or reviewed our podcast, thank you. And if you haven't yet, please do, especially if you are on Apple Podcasts. But honestly, like, anything is awesome. If you know someone who might like listening to us, be sure to recommend Disney A as well. Um, I don't know what we're doing next episode. Um, probably something cool. I don't know. Well, we talked about, I don't know if it's going to be next episode or the episode after, but we, we have a blind date with Disney coming up. Well, it is your summer holidays, so you kind of deserve... It's, no, it's my blind date with Disney. Yeah. You kind of deserve a blind date with yeah. Disney. So, so it's coming up. I don't know. Maybe maybe next week we might continue the decades if you want to go watch some decades movies I want right to go now. watch some decades right now. Right now? You right now. Watch? Let's go do it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. And until the next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney A. Eh? 
I'm finishing your sandwiches right now. Sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs>